Before we get started, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on different topics from painting to productivity masterclasses, iPhone photography, and way more. But more on that a little bit later. Yesterday was the fall equinox. I'm so happy. I love this season so much. How are you doing? I hope that you've had a lovely end of summer or winter if you're in the southern hemisphere. These past couple of weeks have been wonderful here in Brittany. We went on so many walks by the woods, by the seashore. We went foraging, we had picnics in the fields. We enjoyed the wonders of nature so much. We also went to Paris for a couple of days to spend time with family. Iris is becoming so so big so we're trying to spend as much time with our relatives as we can um, and um, Edgar's mom is actually going to stay with us over the next two weeks so um, yeah this is gonna be quite lovely because we're gonna get to um, have a little bit more time to work and yeah um, a little bit of help is always um, it's always more than welcome after spending a few days with my parents we um, we stayed in Paris for for a few days we had some administrative things to do we had to go to the embassy to get a passport for the little one and I had a little bit of work to do as well so um, 
yeah, we walked around quite a bit. We went to La Bien Aimée, of course. And yeah, I, I was gifted a couple of skins of, new, of their new bases that are, that are gonna come out in January, I believe. So I'm gonna be playing with these yarns a little bit over the next couple of weeks or even the next couple of months and see what I could come up with. Um, it's a beautiful, non-superwash, um, breed-specific yarn. So I'm quite, quite excited about that, of course. I was a little bit disappointed, I must say, because when I was in the shop, um, I just walked around as I usually do and looked at all of the beautiful yarn that was on the shelves. And this beautiful, very comfy sofa in the yarn shop. And right next to it, um, there was a little book collection of, well, books that I haven't come across very often in yarn shops before, so I just put them on my pile of things to buy. And when it was time to check out, um, <laughs> it happened that the books were not for sale. <laughs> it was actually Amy's personal bookshelf, well, her little book collection. She had a Zimmerman's book, a couple of um, Clara Parks books as well. She had a beautiful book on uh, cell blue mutants. So I put the Zimmermans and um, I believe um, Clara Parks book, the, the most recent one, A Stash of One's Own. So yeah, I was really excited because I, I, I knew that I had some something to read on the way back to Brittany, but... <laughs> It wasn't for sale, so I had to, <laughs> I had to let them go, <laughs> which means that um, I'm gonna have to look on the internet and see if I can purchase them um, myself. As I've mentioned in last month's video, I love to watch some educational videos while knitting, so. This week, I've been enjoying um, Lee Gowren's sketchbook class on Skillshare, which are our sponsors this month. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands and thousands of classes on a myriad of different topics. A premium membership is less than $10 a month and it will give you access to all of the classes. If you want to give them a try for free, they are offering you a two-month premium subscription. All you have to do to sign up is to click on the link in the description box below. So yeah, we're back. Um, we've been back for a couple of days only and um, I, I took only one project with me while I was in Paris. Um, I usually pack too much, as we do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I usually take like three projects and I end up working on one only, if at all, any at all. And I ended up working on it um, just a little bit because when there's family around, especially with a newborn baby, I want to give my family as much atten attention as I can and um, I don't have obviously to look at the knitting when talking to people, but um, I just... I just didn't even think of taking my, knee, my knitting out, if I'm completely honest. So, yeah, I it means that I have quite a bit of um, knitting to catch up on. So, um, this is what I have been doing um, over the past couple of days. And um, the project that I'm working on at the moment is the third version of a jumper that will come out next month 
um, it's the I think I've shown, I've shown you a jumper before um, is the Plotulopi jumper which um, um, I've knit using one strand of Plotulopi and one strand of Isager mohair silk held together um, and this is how much progress I've made on that third version so far I'm about to divide for the sleeves and this yarn is fantastic it's been in my stash for quite some time because I just didn't want to use it it's way too precious it's a limited edition which means that this colorway and this base is not going to be available anymore so I just wanted to make sure that I would use it for the right the right design or the right project so um, so yeah I finally <laughs> cast on with it and this is the most beautiful beautiful pink I've ever seen. The yarn is by a family run business um, located in Sweden and they are using old Swedish breeds to create these unique plates that resemble Plotilopi quite a bit. Um, and each of their colorways are unique, the same as their different bases, because they blend different type of um, of breeds uh, together to create um, to create the colorways, and then they over dye the, um, um, the yarn. So they are they are completely unique, and um, each colorway is um, a limited edition. And when they sold out, they work on a new batch uh, with different. Um, different breeds and um, and different colorways and they create different colorways for that so this morning i received a new parcel from them um, and this is the new collection which i believe is almost completely sold out so these are i think some of the colorways available and i've received even more <laughs> these so I'm definitely going to make a jumper with the copper colorway at some point there's more <laughs> and this is a very sticky and smelly yarn because it's minimally processed um, I would say that it's even more rustic than Plotulopi but it's way softer if that makes any sense um, it's probably even less processed though I don't really know the steps that are taken to create Plotilope yarn but I feel that there's a lot of lanolin that is left on the yarn compared to um, Plotilope which doesn't have a whole lot of that um, but the yarn works the exact same way as Plotilope it's going to break like crazy and you either have to hold your two strands together and keep working this way to double the yarn and um, use a little bit of water or no water at all and just squeeze it in between your hands and work from that again it's a very different uh, knitting experience and with this type of yarn you pretty much have to learn how to unknit uh, which means that um, if you're a tight knitter um, as I am you're probably going to have to uh, stop tensioning your yarn altogether and just hold it with like in between two fingers and work this way without tensioning, tensioning it over like your pinky or or any other way you tension your yarn because otherwise it's going to break every couple of stitches and um, and yeah this yarn doesn't need to be to be tensioned it has to be taken care of um, very very gently so I have quite a bit of yarn in front of me um, apart from 
all of the skins or all of the plates that I have just shown you. I have the yarn that I have bought at La Bien Aimée and I also went to another yarn shop called Lille Wiesel in Paris and I bought more yarn there because I just cannot resist visiting all of my favorite Parisian um, yarn stores. Um, so I'm going to show you what I got at La, La Bien Aimée first. I got two skins of my favorite sock yarn, which is Mondim by Rosa Pomar. It's a non-superwash, nylon-free, breed-specific yarn, which creates the most squishy, um, which creates the squishiest, um, and yeah, just <laughs> lovely, yummy socks. <laughs> I've knit uh, two pairs with this yarn. I've used the stripey one, yeah, two stripey ones, so this is my first time working with their solid colorways and I'm really looking forward to spending a little bit more time with um, with this yarn and enjoying a couple of stitches there. Um, this is a new pattern that came out this week. Um, using the same yarn, but this one is dyed by La Bien Aimée. So it's the same base, it's Mondim, but as you can see, it has some interesting colors happening. And so Amy sent me that skin. Uh, a couple of months ago for me to try it out and see if I could create something with it and it's been sitting in my stash on my desk for quite some time waiting for me to pick it up um, and just like pair it with the perfect design pattern that um, I could come up with and yeah just one day out of the blue because I'm working on other projects um, patterns that are kind of featuring this stitch pattern. Um, this is how I came up with um, the, the design pattern for these socks and it's actually a variation of sock number three from the Simple Sock Collective which is a collection that I have released um, throughout the past couple of months. So it's the exact same stitch pattern, but I've used it sli slightly differently to create these socks. And this sock pattern is called Into the Woods um, because the stitch pattern used kind of reminds me of pine trees if you look it this way. And it looks like maybe wheat, wheat grass on that way, on that when you look at it, when you look at it like this. So I just thought of naming it into the woods, and this design pattern is really important for me because, well, first of all, I love the stitch pattern. It's quite addictive to knit. I love the the silk yarn as well, but most importantly. Um, you've probably seen what is happening in the Amazon, uh, what has been happening for quite some time and pretty much what is happening in many forests around the earth. There's a lot of companies, there's a lot of government that think that um, natural resources are, are disposable and, and um, is going to bring them profit and it does but it's forests are so important for for many reasons they are i'm taking the amazon as an example it is the home of local people it is the home of some beautiful flora some beautiful fauna and this forest on its own um, generates more than 20% of our oxygen, which means that if it's completely destroyed, um, well, first of all, I think it's going to be quite tough on us, um, but also there's just so much 
that is still yet unknown from these forests um, in the sense that we haven't been able to explore um, this part this part of the world um, from a scientific perspective which means that there could potentially be medicine to discover there's a lot of wrong things happening in our world and um, the Amazon is just one example but you know there's forests in um, Indonesia that are being completely destroyed to to plant for example palm you know palm plantations so it's just one example amongst a myriad of tragedies that are happening in forests or in oceans and pretty much pretty much everywhere so what I thought of doing with that pattern um, is to um, give 20% of the pattern um, sales towards Rainforest Alliance, which is working towards preserving, um, protecting the Amazon forest. So yeah, I will link the pattern in the description box below. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know honestly if, you know, it will make any difference at all, but I just feel that, you know, governments are not necessarily doing what they should be doing to protect um, our ecosystems. So if there's um, NGOs that could do that and we could help in a way, um, I'm more willing to do so. So if my work in any way could help to maybe raise awareness of what is happening and, um, and help to fund um, those organizations that are doing good to our planet, um, I'm more happy to do so. so. Yeah, the link for the pattern will be listed below. Um, after that important um, topic, I just wanted to maybe keep showing you the other things that I got while I was at La Pierre Um I got two more skeins or two more balls of Isagur more hair still because I thought that I will be able to use them with um, some other yarn that I bought and that I'm going to show you in one second. I got another skein of Tuco wool uh, which is 100% finished wool. Uh, yeah. So I got that because the last time that I was in La Bionnemi I think that I got another, another mini skein. They're 50 grams. And I knew that I would need another 50 gram in order to design something. I just hope that I got the right colorway. <laughs> I didn't check that, so I'm going to check it out after. And I think that's pretty much everything that I got from La Bienvenue. Then I went to Lille Weasel and I got some Rohan, Rohan Felty Tweed DK in this colorway for me and in this colorway for Edgar and I'm going to knit us some hats for this fall and I was thinking of adding a little bit of silk mohair to my hat because why not? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. While I was away I received uh, I received a parcel for something that I had ordered and I got myself a new kit, a new set of uh, Chiago needles and these are the teeniest, tiniest needles, circular needles there is, I think. Um, these are, I think, nine... Well, there's different cables, but the size of the needle is quite small as you can see and they are going to work on 13 inches 15 inches on the 5 inches 6 inches and 8 inches cables so it means that I'm going to be able to knit 
some sleeves with that, which is wonderful because I absolutely hate to um, to knit in Magic Loop and use DPNs for sleeves. So yeah, I'm quite excited about that. And it's very tiny. It's quite heavy with the uh, number of needles that are in there, but um, yeah, it's very tiny and perfect for for traveling. So. And the last thing that I wanted to share with you um, this month is the release of this pattern, um, this little jumper, which is the third installment of the Fleurville um, collection that I have curated for the Rian Collective. I've released the Flora Cowl and the Flora Hat before, and this is the third and last pattern of the collection so um, this is knit out of the hibiscus colorway which is a colorway that I have created for um, this yarn range and this is the jumper which features a split hem um, it's knit bottom up and it has some drape shoulders, um, a simple rolled neckline um, and it features the same stitch pattern that I have used for two of the other designs. So it's quite comfy and I kind of love wearing it um, in my dungarees. So yeah, I think that that's pretty much everything for this month. Um, it's the end of September already. Yesterday was the first day of the fall um, and we have lovely things planned for this beautiful new season. So yeah, I hope that um, your start of autumn is off to a great start and, you have, and that you have lovely things planned, that you have lovely things on your needles. Let me know if you have um, a full bucket list I would love to know because I've, I have one ready um, and we have already starting ticking off um, boxes from that list so, so I wish you a wonderful end of September and a wonderful start of October and I will see you either on the Instagram and or on the next video next month so see you soon